All right, so we'll get started here in just a couple minutes. Uh, thanks for attending the March 31st, 2020 Club Cubase Google Hangout. My name is Greg Undo. I'm uh, presenting from outside Washington, D.C. in <clears throat> Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, and um, I work for Yamaha in the United States, kind of representing Steinberg products. Uh, so this will be a live interactive Q&A session. It will be available to stream afterwards at the same location at the youtube.com slash Cubase. Uh, so it'll be available to watch after. If you're watching the Hangout Live, you can please feel free to introduce yourself. Uh, as we get started, tell us where you're from. And if you have questions, please feel free to enter them in the comments field. We'll try to get as many questions answered as possible. I know sometimes we get hundreds and hundreds of questions, but we'll try to get as many. We had people that had submitted some questions in advance, which is always helpful, and you could do that at clubcubase at steinberg.de. Uh, so if you wanted to send questions for future Hangouts, we know that there are a lot of people that are kind of at home uh, and have a bit more free time with current health situation that's going on around in the world. So we want to be able to do this. So we're trying to do about two Hangouts a month, generally on Tuesday and Fridays. So um, if you have questions, we could... Um, feel free to send them in advance so um so and so if you want to go ahead and introduce yourselves tell us where you're from um and then we'll let people get logged in if you're watching this uh after the hangout you may want to skip forward about 10 minutes or so by the times everyone gets logged in so we'll be able to do that we'll try to have an index um set up uh, of all the topics that were covered uh, probably maybe by tomorrow morning we'll try to do that so I usually have to go back and do that but if someone wanted to you know keep an index of topics for me and uh, email to clubcubase at steinberg.de I wouldn't reject it so that could save me a, a number uh, a lot of time in kind of preparing that but um We'll go ahead and uh, let people see people are getting logged in. So let's go ahead and see who's I've seen some familiar names come through. All right. So again, just feel free to introduce yourself. Tell us uh, where you're from. And if you have questions, just simply kind of ask them. Okay. So we'll go ahead and... Okay, so we see Alo. He had sent a question in advance, but I see priority got answered. All right, so Millard from Pennsylvania, Millard Brown. Okay, so let's just go ahead. And uh, I have some uh, home construction going on next to me. There's new houses being built. Uh, my neighbors, so you may hear some banging in the back. And probably like many of us that have children, uh, my son is at home. So uh, you may hear him make an appearance uh, in the middle. I should probably lock the door really quickly. Uh, but he may come bang on a door at some point. Hang on just one second. Okay, so again, if you're watching this in the rebroadcast, we'll go ahead and uh, skip ahead. Probably, you know, maybe usually takes about five, ten minutes for everyone to get logged in. Okay, seeing some great questions already. Okay. Okay, so we have people from Italy and Pennsylvania. All right, so we have Texas, Sweden. We have Hampshire in the UK, Manchester, that's great. Nepal. It's probably very late or very early there. OK, 
Okay, Atlanta, Sweden, Dallas. Good to see you, Robbie. Houston, Texas. I, yeah, Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. I had family from near there. Good to see you, Taylor. Liverpool. All right, we have India, Denmark, Norway, Germany, Manchester, France. All right, Oregon. Okay, we still have people getting logged in. Sherman Oaks, California, been there many times. South Africa, Texas, Scotland, UK, San Francisco, Zurich. All right, Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Gant, good to see you on a hangout. All right. Gant Kushner. That's a great studio, great guitar player as well. Okay. Okay, we have South Africa, Oakland, Toronto, Los Angeles. Seattle. All right, from Audio Logic. It's a great studio. Miss going there. Hope everyone's well in Seattle. Okay. All right, Portugal. Palm Coast, Florida. All right, so. And again, if, as you have questions, uh, please just feel free to leave the questions in the comments field. All right, we have Quebec, Seychelles. Hope I said that correctly. Nigeria, Indiana, Bruxelles, maybe Brussels. La Quinta, California, Quebec, Oslo. Ocean City, Maryland. Been there on vacation many times. All right, so we have Paris. All right, people still getting logged in. Hope everyone has been safe and healthy. Okay, Germany. Okay, so seeing questions on reference tracks. It's been a popular question recently. All right, so people logging in. We have the Bronx. All right. Good to see you, Al, on the Hangout. All right, Cambridge, Paris. Burbank. All right, we have Dubai. Okay, we'll get started about one more minute. We still have more people getting logged in. Farmville, Virginia. Okay, a couple more people getting logged in. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we had some people that had emailed questions uh, in advance. So let's go ahead and um, take a look at some of those. So I appreciate that. So one question uh, we had was from uh, Mark Roos. Um, And let me just see if I could find it really quickly here. Okay, it says, hi, Greg. Uh, would you be able to tell me uh, in preferences 
to have Cubase mute mix down tracks as a setting. It would be save time when allowing multiple piano stems. Thank you. And uh, I actually know Mark, uh, and he is featured in one of our spotlight videos <clears throat> on the Steinberg YouTube channel. So I just wanted to make sure that I understood the question. And what he wanted to do is he's often doing kind of multiple uh, mix downs for different clients with different naming conventions and how to make that work. So let's say if we have it set up here to do a mix down between our left and right locators, I'll just choose a short uh, snippet here just for X, you know, just to make sure. And what he would do is have the mix down track show up in the project. And what he didn't want to do is to have the mix down project be incorporated accidentally in the next mix down project. So he wanted it to, after it was imported to have it automatically mute it. So if I, we'd set up a range here. So let's say we do an, an audio mix down and we could just do this and go to your file menu, go to export and we'll do our audio mix down. I'll choose just to do the stereo out and I'll just call this Roos Hangout question. And I will store this uh, just on my desktop for now. But I'm also going to choose create audio track and insert to pool. So now when I export the audio, this will automatically now export and it's going to place it at the very bottom track. And it's kind of cool that it places it at the bottom because now we could make a macro. And so what he wanted to do is to take that mix down that was automatically placed at the bottom of the track and just have that muted so you could do another mix down and not have this file uh, included in the mix down as well. So to do that, I created a macro. So if we wanted to just simply go to key commands. And if you're not familiar with what a macro is, a macro is a series of key, uh, a series of key commands that will just be triggered in sequential order. And you could set up your own key commands to do this. So I just simply did two different commands. So one would be uh, under navigate. And then we'll have the function bottom. And on my Mac, it's the end key. It may be a different key on the Windows platform. So I click on that function and I add that command. And then for the second command, what I wanted to do is just to choose edit. And then we're just going to mute the event. So that will mute the track. So it's just these two different conditions. So as soon as I have a different track selected here, so let's say I just randomly have that track selected. I could go to my edit menu and go to macros and I could choose mute mix down file or we could call it a different function like mute bottom track. So since the mix down file is always at the bottom, this macro will go to the very bottom of the project, the very last track in the project, navigate there and then mute that track. So I do this, trigger the macro and now you see it's navigated to that particular function and muted that track. So when Mark does another mix down, this one won't automatically be included. So when you imp when you do the export audio mix down, just simply uh, fire off the key, fire off that macro, and that will make sure that that track is muted. And if you wanted to, you could also just simply come here and as soon as macros are created, you could actually assign your own key commands for a particular macro as well. So you could just have your own key command to trigger that particular function. And then that would automatically uh, fire off that command. So again, that macro uh, is just navigate to the bottom, edit, mute. And then uh, it should be all set with that. So give that a try, Mark, and let me know how that works out for you. Okay. So another question um, says, upon inserting plugins on a group track, whether a Steinberg one or a third party, I'm unable to open it and select a preset. Uh, I've attached two screenshots uh, showing how they load up. They 
the load with the improper they load with they load the improper icons in the insert panel how do i remedy this i've just installed cubase and there is no reinstall cubase and there's no change so let's say um if i had a number i'll just create a number of audio tracks here so i will and he sent me a picture that included the brick wall limiter. So I will take these tracks and now I'm just going to right click and we could just add a group channel to the selected channel. So I'm gonna add a stereo group. And then as we come here, we have our group channel. Now, uh, and I don't know, I'm not sure if this was just kind of dumb luck, uh, but not all plugins have presets. So if you come here to let's say our dynamics and you go to the brick wall limiter and you look, there aren't any presets for the brick wall limiter. You know, it's not, you know, you kind of set it to, you know, minus one DB or whatever, and you know, you're kind of good. Uh, but other plugins, so let's say if I wanted to go to like a multi-band compressor and this is on the inserts, you'll see all the different presets. So make sure that the plugins that you're inserting actually have all the pre actually has presets because the one example that you sent is a brick wall limiter and that doesn't use it as a Steinberg one I think it was a brainworks plugin also and sometimes the third party plugins may have a separate area to load in presets within the plugin itself so check that but I didn't find any you know third party or included plugins that blocked the presets, but some plugins like the brick wall limiter didn't have any presets. Okay, uh, so a question uh, that was mailed in. Uh, I'm trying to set up Waves Tune, but I can't get the transport locator to be synced between Cubase and the plugin. The manual says, uh, Pro Tools users have to use a rewire thing. Um, so I think it's going to function the same way. And I don't have a license of Waves Tune. Um, so I may not be able, but what you want to do is to make sure that, like, you know, when you come over here, that you have rewire uh, enabled. I, I don't even think I have a rewire slave device on my computer anymore. Um, but you want to make sure that, you know, you have, okay, we have rewire here. So we get a rewire to rewire setup. And then you just want to, you'll probably see your waves tune in here. Uh, and then you just want it to select that. And that should synchronize the two transports. Uh, so rewire will do kind of, you know, send sync information between two different programs. And that should kind of work the same way. So give that a try. And again, I don't have a license, unfortunately. Uh, so it's, I haven't physically tried it, but I didn't really notice anyone having like huge problems with it. Okay, so it says, um, let me just get rid of a message here. Um, it says, I was trying to automate the envelopes in Groove Agent to slowly extend the release of a snare sample, which I used to create a snare roll. Uh, I couldn't seem to figure out how this works. Um, uh, I tried uh, adding the automation parameter, but that didn't change the sound of all when I automated the parameter. So let's take a quick look. Um, let's do a new project here for Groove Agent. All right. Thanks for people sending in questions. Again, if you want to send questions in advance, send it to clubcubase at steinberg.de. Okay, so let's say if I wanted to, uh, I'll just find. All right, so let me just 
All right, so if I come here, let's just say, uh, I will, we'll see if we could automate this. So let's just say I'll take, uh, go to the amplifier section for the envelope and we'll see if that automates. We'll just rewind. So I'll just try this. So one thing that, let's see if I, let's just select a particular sound and I'll just record. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll play that back. So it doesn't look like that's automating it. Um, and I had sent kind of a message to uh, some of the product planners with this and I haven't heard back from them. So I'll see if I get it figured out, but it looks like that parameter is not automating for some reason. I, I apologize for that. Um, Okay, it says, I often use a uh, swing quantize around 40% in a project. When I open the MIDI drum editor, audio editor, the grid is not changing to the quantize setting. So I'm not sure if it makes sense to have everything, uh, like to have the different editors. So let's say if I have this as a drum editor, you know, to have the editors actually reflect, you know, I think the grid makes sense for the grid to stay on the particular grid. And if you, you know, as opposed to changing the grid, because the beat is still where the beat is. And, you know, you could have different swings that will be uh, around the different parts. So you could have different feels or swings that can play off of the grid, but if the swing was the grid, then you wouldn't really have a swing. Uh, so I think it makes sense to current behavior where everything is kind of aligned to the grid, where the visual representation is to the grid, and you could see the offsets based on what you wanted to do. Now, if you wanted to do, you know, editing of different parts, you know, if you have a particular, like, great feel that you want it, and you want it to be able to set that as like a quantize point, what you could do is if you open up kind of the quantize panel and you have like this amazing groove, just drag and drop the MIDI part. And then that could create a kind of a groove quantize preset. Uh, and that preset you could use to kind of have other parts uh, uh, going along with that but I don't think it really makes sense and I understand why on one level you may want it thinking it's going to be easier to move different things but again the swing feel is what you want and I think you want the reference of that to the grid um, okay so okay so we have a question uh, I'm trying the um Okay, so we had a question. I'm trying to change the CC controller. I'm trying to change the CC from the IK iRigs uh, controller. So I want to assign the control and transport keys, play, rewind, stop, and some of the CC. Uh, when you turn the knobs, it goes 100% on or off since there's no increments like 
and other JWs. Uh, also, for some unknown reason, Cubase is not letting me do the learn CC. Uh, just work on the first four on the VST rack, not into plugins or the instruments. So, you know, with this, what you'd want to do is, uh, you know, when you're working with ex other MIDI controllers, go to your studio setup and you could probably set up a generic MIDI remote and set this, the input and output to your IK controller. And here you could have different functions for transport, uh, for, you know, so if you say, I want this button to do this particular, you know, start, stop, but you have to make sure that these are set up. So like in my studio, I have a little Novation controller. So I could just say, these are going into my remote. And some controllers may have more than one MIDI port. And here you could do the learn function and, you know, just simply, you know, move, hit a particular note and that could learn that particular parameter. Uh, so if you don't think that it's actually transmitting MIDI, one thing to check is if you go to the MIDI inserts, there is a MIDI monitor plugin. So make sure that you turn this on. And then as you move knobs or parameters, you'll see that automatically reflect onto what's going on uh, in the particular control or MIDI note that's being pressed. So make sure that you're getting MIDI communication. Uh, sometimes the, uh, you know, I think I looked at a picture of the controller, it only has four knobs, and then I think you hit a button to make sure that that's transmitting uh, those four knob switch controllers. But check it within the MIDI monitor section, and then you'll see that. And I know for other programs that it has kind of like a little software layer to help work with that but you know it may not carry over that maybe for particular DAWs and not others but you could set it up in your MIDI uh, in the generic remote and you know make sure that that is configured correctly and at this point you know you could save that but you could check to see what MIDI information is actually being spit out by the MIDI monitor and just put that on a track and make sure you know that it's outputting the MIDI messages that you think. And then you could assign it for controlling different parameters and synths. Um, and then you should be all set. So I also kind of uh, another point made by this question was uh, they're having problems with importing video onto Catalina and it was crashing. I haven't really heard of that issue if you have a particular video file if you want to send me a link you could always check the steinberg website as to what video codecs and containers are best used you know or kind of where the cubase video engine is optimized sometimes just doing something from a cell phone doesn't really carry over uh, as well you may have to convert it with you know some third-party utilities for you know, to make it a ProRes codec and an H.264 with the right containers. So make sure that your video is is set up for that. And if you want to email a link to me at the uh, club cubase at steinberg.de, I'd be happy to take a look at it. Okay, so we had a question about Media Bay that was sent in. Is it possible to preview loops in Media Bay in its full length regardless of the cycle mode legato or cycle mode length in your project. Uh, for instance, uh, my loop in Media Bay is 16 bars long and my cycle loop is in my project is only four bars. I believe that my sample in Media Bay plays only its f first four bars because of the cycle mode length. Uh, so let's take a quick look at it. My son's knocking on the door. Hang on just one second. All right, so my son's doing his best to distract me. So let's come over here. Sorry about the pause. I'm sure many can relate in our current situation. So let's say if I have a short cycle marker and we wanted to audition the, the Media Bay loop um, 
longer than the cycle marker. So let's say I'll just kind of come here. We'll set up a very short cycle marker of like a couple of beats. my keyboard shortcuts right all right so let's say I just so I have that as my cycle marker let me come over here to my media bay I'll take I know these are some of the longer files so these will be more than one measure in length so that isn't following the we can see that the length of the preview isn't linked to the cycle marker. So that seems to be working uh, as you want. So the preview isn't tied directly to the sample marker uh, or to the cycle marker rather. Okay, um, and kind of a follow-up question to this, and is it possible to change the starting point of loops in the media bay? So if you come and we can do this in the media bay or directly in the media bay went in the zone on the right hand side. If you see where it turns to a pencil here, we could just take a portion of the loop. And as we play, we could just start that directly here. And I could see again, a different start point for that particular loop. So if you wanted to grab just a portion of the loop, you could just drag in just a particular portion. I'll stop that so it doesn't annoy everyone. And then you should be all set. So again, to start the preview, you could just kind of take the cycle and you could just say, you know, once you have a cycle, just kind of grab uh, the locators here and then you could just at that point choose a different start point to the uh, to the loops in the media bay Okay, so we'll go over back to uh, Some of the live questions we had. Thanks for everyone's patience uh, So question I think this was answered in the comments most of the time I work on desktop PC where I have latest Cubase loaded Sometimes I travel and I want to work on my projects. Can I load Cubase on the laptop and just bring the Cubase USB key? Yes, uh, that's one of the nice things about the key. You can install it on as many systems as you want. Your friends or studios could download Cubase and you just show up with your e-licensor, connect it, and then you're all set. So, you know, I, and the keys are pretty resilient. Um, I've used the same key for uh, about 18 years. And, you know, normally, you know, I'm obviously in a bit of a travel lull with the current health situation, but I normally, for... 18, 20 years, I've flown over, you know, 100,000 miles a year, you know, pretty extensively and haven't had any problems with it. Okay, so uh, we have a question. Um, why is it when I send multiple tracks to a group track, I lose stereo tracks on the tracks? I want them all, uh, I sent, they all go to mono. So let's go ahead and I'll just, We'll just check this out real quick. Uh, I think, you know, make sure that when you add a group track that it is a stereo group. I'm assuming that you're doing that, but we'll just test it. And so I'll just add, um, let's say just two audio tracks and let me go ahead and add a group track. I'll add a group track that's being summed from, that's being sent. All right, so let's take two different loops here just to audition. Okay, and I will pan this uh, all the way to the left. So now we listen to our drums. And let me find a different sound.
and I'll pan this one all the way to the right. So when you play these together, it should be very awkward sounding, so. So it looks like even though these two tracks, this one panned left, this one panned right into the group. And if we listen to our group and let's just uh, pan these, we'll just make sure. So I'll pan the group. So there's the space when I pan over to the left, I'm just gonna hear drums. So make sure that when you add the group track, um, it's really common sometimes the default uh, configuration may be set to mono. Make sure that it's going to a stereo group. So I don't think you'll lose your panning settings, but just check the uh, channel configuration of your group track. Okay. Okay, going through more questions. Thanks everyone for great questions. Um, so we have a question from Millard. What is dithering? Why do we do it? When do we do it? How do we do it? So what dithering does is it's designed to help when taking a higher resolution recording, like a higher bit depth or a higher sample rate recording. So let's say you're doing a file that's at 20, you're recording at 24 bit, uh, 44.1 or 24 bit 96K or 192K. But let's say the ultimate delivery format will be like, let's say for some people still a CD or you want it to be an MP3. So you're taking a file from, uh, you know, a high resolution, and then you want to kind of maintain that signal integrity, the quality of the sound, when you go down to a lower resolution file. And that's what dithering does. And what it kind of does is, the, you know, some, you know, special magic voodoo. It actually kind of adds noise technically into your file. So what a lot of people do is on their master bus, uh, on one of the inserts, like a post fader insert, you can just simply enable, um, and this is where we could use the UV 22. So under mastering, you could just have your UV 22 dithering plugin. So if you're, you know, your output bits, you could choose down to like 16 bit, you know, so a lot of functions in Cubase will do automatic dithering. Uh, for legacy sake, you know, we we kind of did a plug in based on the Apogee UV22, which was kind of a, a really highly regarded dithering algorithm. Um, so, you know, we've employed that in the software and that's been part of the Cubase programs for, mm, 16, 17 years. Um, and, you know, if you talk to different mastering engineers, you know, they often will have, you know, arguments over, you know, which dithering algorithm. But again, it allows you to kind of maintain the signal quality, the quality of the audio while going down to a lower resolution file. So that's the intention of dithering. Okay. Uh, is there any reason? Uh, okay. It says, uh, where are the VST plugin manager folders stored? Uh, I made a mistake with the profile manager and all my plugin categories went poof. Um, I think, and it's gonna be different uh, on uh, whether you're on Mac or PC. So I'm on Mac now. So when I come over here, uh, I think if you go to the library and then you could do that by going into the go menu and holding down the option key. And then if you go into preferences, and I'm just kind of guessing here, so I may just, and we'll take a look at um, maybe presets. And we'll see if, See if they're maybe in here. Sometimes the all right. Yeah, 
And it might be like in, uh, let me just, so here's where you can see kind of the black controls. Uh, I don't think I have any, so let me save a preset here really quick. And so if you have your VST plugin manager, I'll create a new one. Let's see if it shows up here. May have to just restore this. Let me just get to my preferences again. So, but I think you might find it in the preference files. Um, I could see if I could dig up the exact location. So, if you want to email me, I could. Uh, look it up uh, where the presets will be stored. Okay, another question. Is there any reason I would ever use VST2 effects or instruments if VST3 are available, CPU or memory usage? Uh, generally, you're always going to be better off with VST3 versions if you have, this, if you have the option. Um, generally, they're more stable. They could also you know, have side chaining capability. They can work in multiple... Uh, channel configurations if you're doing surround and they also have the ability to not take CPU processing if it's not actually processing audio so when in doubt always go to uh, always use the VST3 version okay so let's go on okay I've connected my synth with audio connections uh, external instruments and MIDI device Render in place is working nicely. Tried same with eight channel mono drum machine, but it's not rendering. Any tips? Um, you know, it could really, it's kind of the same function that you're, you know, if you have it working for your synth, um, you know, and if you're not familiar, for those who aren't familiar with this concept, you could go to external instruments under the audio connections in the Cubase Pro. And you could just have your different, uh, you know, you can add an external instrument, let's say like, you know, for your drum machine, give it a name. All right, and at this point you could, you know, have, I think most of the times when you go to add uh, an external instrument, so you could say, okay, how many mono returns, um, out of curiosity, you know, if it's working for your external um, synthesizer and not your drum machine, I'm, and I'm assuming that you have the eight mono outputs from your drum machine connected as external instruments, but just out of curiosity, try it as a stereo and see if it's passing the audio that way as the external instrument um, and see if it's maybe just a configuration thing. But, you know, if you have... Uh, an external synth going it's this the same exact concept so it should be working the same way and also check your audio interface you know check those inputs to make sure that they're passing audio as well uh, you know they could be like in a different routing mode or something like that okay Okay, it says we should be able to generate a USB e-licensor backup. Can't you provide a cloud tool? You can always check how many workstations will access from the same license key. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I know that they're investigating and working on lots of, you know, more contemporary solutions, something along those lines. Uh, many people prefer the key because they can work anywhere they want, you know, um, like I was just talking to a client of ours and she's like, you know, I never want to be reliant on a internet connection. I just, 
you know, because I may be doing something, you know, in, you know, the mountains in Colorado where there's no internet access, where someone feels creative and, you know, my client wants me to go out there, there's no internet available and, you know, I still have to work. So, um, so, you know, the point would, you know, the point is understood. Uh, and I, you know, I know that there are people that are working on new solutions. I'm not sure when they'll be released. It's a big project, obviously. Um, okay, so we'll move on. Okay, uh, and the question is, I barely have room for USB anymore. Both my laptops are USB-C. It's honestly very inconvenient to carry around the dongle, but hey, Cubase gets it done. You know, it's it's really easy, you know, and I have USB-C on, you know, I carry two laptops for every work trip. And one has USB-C, one doesn't. I just have a, you know, a simple USB-C hub, you know, for $10 on Amazon. It has three ports and, you know, I just simply use that and find it very easy to connect. Um, so, but again, we understand a point. Okay. So going on. Thanks everyone for questions and your patience. We hope everyone's learning something. Okay. Okay, so question, how do we do a straight click without accents? So let's go ahead and just turn on our metronome. So I hit C. Okay, so when we go to our metronome setup and we could find this under the transport. And here you could actually go to uh, click sounds, so you'll have, you know, so you could have, you know, custom sounds, but if you want it to only be, you know, like one particular sound, you know, here you could say, um, you know, you could adjust the velocity in, let's say if I want to go to, like, uh, Let's say, like, I want more of a, a Yuri click or electronic. So here you could just set all these to, um, and let me just stop this right quick. It's probably annoying. All right, so. So let's say, you know, if you go to your click patterns, so let's say if you want to go to, you know, 4-4, four, four, you could, you know, just choose to have, so let's just edit that click pattern. And let's just go to my signature. I'll just add a quick signature track here. And we'll see this. So here, if we do that, there's no accent. And let's, I'll just go back to, let's say our default. Click, so go to my transport here to metronome setup. And let's use. Sorry about that. Let me just double click here. Um, so again, metronome setup. So then you have four of the same clicks. And then if you wanted to experiment, you could, You could do stuff like that as well, or if you want to have different patterns where I want it to be 6 8 or double tempo, you could do that. But just simply, uh, you could edit the metronome pattern uh, and you could do that directly from the bottom transport. 
uh, as well. Or if you have a signature track, just double click on that and just you have the default then you could just change the first click to the other clicks. All right, so questions, do we uh, do we guy do we do timestamps for the different topics afterwards? Yeah, we usually do it like maybe look for it tomorrow morning, but if again as we mentioned earlier, if people want to do it uh, there's always, you know, I'm always happy to take someone else doing it and sending it to club Cubase at Steinberg.de or leaving it in the comments. Okay. So question, uh, is there a way to set up the hover over mouse AI feature in the CC 121 on another MIDI controller? I can't find out what the command for the device setup mapping. I don't think so that the AI knob is kind of unique, you know, to some of the Yamaha controllers, you know, some of the earlier interfaces do it, but the AI knob, if you're not familiar with it is, you could just kind of hover over anything like this and move that knob and it kind of controls that particular parameter. And it's so fast and helpful. So you don't have to sit there for, you know, 14 hours mapping different controllers, whatever you go to, you just hover and it's gonna do that. So it's not a standard MIDI controller message. And that's one of the unique things of the CC121. So I don't think you're gonna see it in a MIDI controller. Uh, there may be a Yamaha keyboard or two, maybe a MX49 or MX61 might offer the AI functionality, but it's not something that is a typical MIDI controller is gonna do. So that'll be kind of unique to the CC121. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll through. Thanks to everyone for great questions. And if you're liking to hang out so far, feel free to go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And this way you get notified when different, um, when different hangouts and different videos are posted. Okay, it says uh, from Newport, Oregon, USA. How'd you change the channel colors on the mixer? So as of 10.5, you know, if we uh, have different mixer colors, so let's say if I just add a number of tracks here and I wanted these tracks to all be uh, similar colors, so say I want them all to be that color, um, we could now go into the preferences and if we go to the mix console, uh, I think it's going to be preferences, user interface, track and mix console colors. You could now just kind of set the signal strength. And as you would hit apply, um, I think I'm in the right version. Okay. Yeah that that would carry over into, you know, the full mix screen as well. So that's how you could do it. So again, just kind of set, uh, go to preferences. And you could adjust kind of the mix uh, console colors there. All right, so we'll move on. Okay. Okay, good to see John Flowers. He's one of my Yamaha colleagues on a hangout. It's good to see you here. Okay. Okay, going through, we're going through a lot of introductions. Sorry, we have lots of questions. Thanks again. Um, Okay, uh, question, I want to make a glissando from C3 to G3, starting on beat one, arriving on beat three. Can I do that in Cubase, for example, uh, with Retrolog? If yes, how? So let's take a quick look. Uh, I probably will have a brain cramp and not be able to figure it out in Retrolog, but we'll give it a shot here. All right, I'm gonna get rid of my 
plug-in collection that I made. So usually like those functions are gonna be per the instrument and not necessarily like a cue based thing, but all right, so let me just see if I could. So say so it's gonna go from C. And you could just kind of set the time of that glide in milliseconds. So it looks like we go up to five seconds. So that's one way you could do it. So again, if you just kind of go in Retrolog, you'll see a glide that could be enabled, disabled, and you'll see the glide time here. So that's one way of doing it uh, directly inside of, um, of Retrolog. All right, so moving on. Thanks for all the great questions. Okay, so it says, hello all, I'm from Portugal. Question, uh, issue about VST Connect SE or VST Connect Pro in Cubase Pro 10.5 does not appear in the top menu. So VST Connect Pro is a separate purchase, but your VST Connect should just show up under VST Cloud. Uh, and then you could just, you should see the VST Connect there. If you don't see that like that, what you may want to do is to just make sure that, um, you know, you, you could try to start the program with like uh, command option shift or alt control shift and try to, to uh, you know, reset the preferences. But by default, it usually shows up under VST Cloud. I haven't seen an instance where it doesn't show up there. Okay. Okay, next question. Uh, when I use Elastic Pro on, say, audios, uh, if I try to edit the very audio notes, it, it kicks back a message that will erase all my previous edits and then throws it into standard uh, instead of Elastic. Um, so what you may want to do, because the very audio algorithm, the pitch detection and the processing is done using the standard algorithm, and that's the one that's optimized for vocals. Uh, for doing your pitch correction. If you, you know, have done a bunch of work already with the, you know, with the Elast, you know, with, um, you know, with the Elastic Pro and you don't want that to happen, all you'd really have to do is, let's just jump back to this project, is, you know, just take a particular file here. So let's say I have my vocals and duplicate it. So I will we'll just get this project loaded. So I will right click and we will say, you know, duplicate tracks, do this. Um, I will go ahead, select this particular track, uh, go to audio and we'll choose bounce selection. I'll choose to replace the events and then at that point, Everything that you have is still intact here, and now you could do all of your very audio editing uh, on your new file, but it'll take into account all any changes that you've made with the Elastic algorithms, and when it's rendered as a new file, you still have everything directly there. So 
that's that's a, a one way of being able to work with it. Okay. So you see a question. Uh, can a logical editor be used to rename tracks in a folder based on their selected event names? All right, so let's go ahead and get a project set up with that condition, see if we can do it quickly. And uh, it just there's just a uh, project logical editor tutorial uh, released today, and I think I showed some different naming examples. Um, so let's say I have all these, uh, uh, so it's okay. So it can be used to rename tracks in a folder based on their selected event name. So I will go to my project logical editor under the project menu. And now we could do stuff. Uh, so I want to, you know, we'll say transform for the function. Uh, and then we're going to say name. contains and then you could say okay I think we have hat as a name um, or I'll do another let's, let's say I want to take um, container type is equal to folder track uh, and then I wanted to say name and I wanted to do a uh, we'll do an append here and I can say, I'll just type in Taylor sap. Okay. So now when I hit apply, uh, sorry, I had another macro in there. Sorry about that. Let me just enable these tracks. Okay, so let's see if I see if I just so you can see you could do different functions so let's say like I generated name but if I wanted to append where I keep the names and let's say if I put a space I could now hit apply and kind of put the name I could prepend you could also replace search strings so you could say you know um, take you know everything that is hat and replace with hi hat so you can see that hat turned into hi hat there so those are some of the things and you could also set up a you know condition of you know um, you know, the container type is equal to, you know, audio tracks that are in a folder track. Um, do, 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 um, or, or container type folder track. So you could do stuff like that in a project logical editor for naming conventions. Okay, so question. Uh, is there a way to change the increment value of the mouse wheel when moving a fader? So uh, a lot of people use their mouse wheel as like a very handy control surface to do this. So if you hold down, I think it's a shift key, you get fine control. 
over that. So just moving my mouse wheel, now holding down the shift key, you can get finer control. And there may be a preference for that as well. Let's see if we could find it. I'll just try. Uh, and it might be under tool modifiers for some of the tools, but but yeah, just hold down the uh, shift key and that will give you fine level control. So kind of more uh, larger control and shift to have fine control. Okay. Um, so it says, hi from Rochester, New York. I've been trying to research building Cubase 10 templates, synth orchestra. Um, I'm looking for pointers and how to get the best performance uh, with with strings and multi-channel ins. So, you know, what a lot of people do is, you know, if you have a number of different tracks and if you're building a large template, uh, here's two tips that I've seen that people use. One is to, if the project, if the track isn't being used, just simply come here and disable the tracks. And then one by one, you could enable tracks. So that seems to work well for if you don't have a monster computer to be able to do this, and you could do this for multiple tracks, just select and click enable track. Another technique that I've seen some people do, and then just, I'll just load up a uh, instrument track really quickly is let's say we have a retro log. All right. And if I want it to come here, I know some people will take their whole template and save it as a track preset. So when you come here um, to, so they come here and just do a save track preset. And then at this point, uh, you know, they could just set this to, I think that one of the tricks they do is just kind of set that. Uh, and then just kind of come here and choose to reload the track preset. And then, so if you set the output to off, that that can free up system resources. And then just simply reload the preset uh, and it's there isn't a key command for that, so you have to kind of click on that little icon. So those are a couple of tips I've seen people use to kind of free up resources with a large template if you don't have it kind of farmed out to multiple computers. Okay, so uh, we have a question. How do I get Cubase automatically to... Uh, to automatically send out a program change message upon track selection. Uh, and I think I saw your comment earlier, maybe on the uh, Project Logical Editor video. Um, so trying to see, I don't know of a way to do that. Um, you know, and I'm not sure, and maybe you could reiterate, and I probably will be too far at the bottom uh, but maybe if you want to send an email to clubcubase at steinberg.de. And I think you're talking about sending the program change for like a VSL or a Vienna Pro. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure how, you know, why you were sending the program change as opposed to having the sound set on a particular patch. So I think what he wanted to do was to, as soon as the track was set, to send the program change. Um, so if you could just reiterate why the program change isn't set already for the track and why you need to do a program change. Um, I don't know of a way to have it automatically send the program change, you know, because the program change will be kind of an embedded data that could, you know, be from the inspector or you could see it, you know, happen when it goes in. So, um, but, you know, and there may be, you know, and it should be one preference to be aware of is to, uh, under MIDI, 
you know, just to make sure that, uh, let's see if the program changes our chase events. Yeah, so you could make sure that you have your program changed here because that should be sent, you know, if you have the program change embedded as the, in the inspector here. But if you could clarify that, I would just like to know kind of the use case of why there isn't a sound loaded. Okay, so we have a question, uh, no sound into Cubase 10.5, you know, so a lot of times you want to make sure first that we define the audio interface. So go to your studio menu to studio setup and you'll see VST audio system. And here you could see all of like various audio interfaces going on your system. Um, so make sure you have that. And then uh, you want to go to the audio connections under the studio menu. And usually by default, QAs will give you like an input and an output, uh, but make sure and you you could have presets depending on your you know I/O configuration. But make sure that you have your stereo in and that those are set to the ports. Um, and if you're not you know, and here you want to make sure like when you go to an audio track that you have that stereo in and that connection. So you need to define the connection and then make sure that that connection is the one that you intend for that particular track. Uh, if you if it records and you don't hear it, make sure that you know you have uh, the record enable and the monitor turned on. So I'm going to just set this to a left input, and now that I have it input, I could arm it and set it for monitoring. Uh, you, by default, you may have to. Uh, set it to monitor manually and if you want it to kind of behave where it kind of works as people want if you go to preferences uh, and go to VST you could set your auto monitoring style to tape machine and that way it will you know record when you're you know monitor what you're recording when you're recording and when you're playing back our tracks it won't monitor so try those things and I think you know it's probably just a simple routing thing okay um, so can you explain how to register and find artist by instrument in VST connect se so let's see if we could get you know this could be tricky to show in a hangout um, we'll come over here I'm gonna log in So you could search for users. I think it's mostly by username. So if I wanted to search for someone, I'm working with Mark Edwards on this, but I'm not sure if you could actually, uh, and let's see if we double click if we could yeah so and you could always have you know your friends and I probably just um, added a bunch of friends I didn't uh, people I didn't know so I'll delete that uh, but here so you could kind of search by username or name uh, but I'm not sure if you could do you know uh, an actual, like, you know, I'm looking for a bass player kind of thing. So, uh, just, so you, you could try that to start with. Okay. Okay, so we have, just have a question. Um, help me please, when I'm mixing all vocals, doesn't sound in time when I add plugins, especially Auto-Tune Pro. You know, so basically one of the things that you could check out is, you know, Cubase should automatically compensate for plugin latencies. And I've seen some plugins that don't necessarily do this. Um, and, you know, 
and it says when you're mixing, I just want to make sure. Okay. So, you know, you could check to make sure, like when we go into our mix console settings here, one of the functions that you could see is going to be, um, you have like a little setup window here is channel latency. And so as I go to add, let's say just some inserts in this particular track and we'll do some multi-band stuff because that could be um, a little more CPU intensive. So we can see that as I add these different plugins in and I'll do, let's say a big convolution reverb. Okay, so we could see the actual latency of your signal chain here. Um, and you could see the exact latency of that particular, of the particular plugin indicated here in milliseconds. So if you disable auto tune and then turn it on, it should automatically compensate for that. And Cubase will do like, you know, the first time you start Cubase and you see it kind of going slowly through the plugins, it measures and tests the latency of the particular plugins. But here you can see the particular latency imposed by different plugins. And if you find that auto tunes on and then it's off, you know, make sure you have the latest version uh, and, you know, make sure that that's, you know, making sense. Um, but you could see what the latency is here. And if you needed to, you could manually compensate and just kind of shift tracks earlier. Again, you know, I've, it's very rare that I've seen a plugin that, you know, causes it, um, you know, and sometimes on input, you know, there's like people will put plugins on input and then that's off uh, because it has to be processed in real time. So some in in plugins, I think Autotune has a live mode or eco mode, something like that, that could be used in, in that scenario, which has lower latency. But check those things, but you could always just kind of manually check the latency of the plugins. And again, just kind of pop over here in the upper right hand corner, make sure that you have the channel latency enabled. And then you could determine what plugins are causing uh, delays on that particular project or in that particular file. Okay, so we have another question about plans for Cubase to get rid of the dongle. Yeah, we discussed that a bit already. Okay, so project management and starting a track. You know, so one of the things, if I could, you know, impart any wisdom is to have a separate project folder for each track. So when you go file to new project, you get prompted with uh, the Steinberg hub. And a lot of people kind of miss this very important, it's a bit subdued. Uh, in all fairness, but it'll kind of give you a default location. So it'll give you kind of in your music or, you know, like your projects folder, it'll give you a location. So think of every single project that you do having its own unique independent folder. So, and the best way to do this is to be kind of very aware of it. I always choose prompt for project location. So as soon as I go here, I'll create empty. Now it's going to ask me what folder that I want all of my audio files and the projects to be saved to. And then I'll hit open. And now as I record, uh, let's say, okay, I'm recording audio. I had 12 tracks. All right. And we also see, you know, I see a zillion people that have you know, like 100 tracks named like audio zero one. Okay, just name the track before you record. So if you come here, say kick, snare, hat, and hit the tab key while you have the naming open, and that will just take you to the next track in, with the name field enabled.
So now when I want to select all these files, now that I've named them first, and one handy trick to do is for just recording, it'll now just come here. I will just move the selected tracks to a new folder, and then I could just record and enable that particular folder. And as I hit record now, all the files would automatically be named based upon the actual file that we see here. So as soon as we come here, it'll be kick, snare, hat. So, you know, name the files, choose your own project folder. And when you go into like your media bay, or let's say we go into the pool folder, we can now just come over here and we could see the path if we just kind of slide over to the right and you could see the path of where all of your particular files will be saved to. So that's some tips on file management and starting a project. Okay, so I see comment. Maybe my son will use Steinberg one day. He's already been working on some projects. He's he's very proud. So, okay, so we'll come over here. Okay, question. Can I explain what the constrained delay compensation is doing? The one on the lower left-hand corner looks like a clock. Also explains setting up milliseconds in preferences in preference changes how this works. Um, so the when we see the constrained delay compensation, so you know, there's a tremendous amount of math going on in the background constantly to minimize latency as much as possible. So some things don't have to have as high a priority uh, when tracking so that you could run lower latencies. And that's kind of what the constrained delay compensation does. Generally, when I have people that call me up and they say I'm tracking and I'm hearing a weird delay. You know, some plugins may work better with this and some without. At that point, I just tell them to toggle the status of the constrained delay compensation. So if you're doing like, you know, a lot of different MIDI stuff um, with virtual instruments and you have a really heavy load, you may want to just simply, you know, turn the constrained delay compensation on so that you don't have to adjust the buffer as high. And kind of a second part with this was, you know, uh, explain how setting the milliseconds and preference changes how this works, you know. So, you know, and, you know, this will allow you to basically, you know, work with different buffer settings more optimally. So, you know, as we go to your studio setup, we could see, you know, our audio interface, you have a control panel. So the lower the buffer, the harder the computer has to work. But the lower the buffer, the lower the latency. So it's always kind of toggling that particular uh, balance depending on your system. So as you're starting tracking, you may be able to run with a really low buffer. And as you have, you know, 400 orchestral tracks being streamed from your hard drive, you may have to raise the buffer. So that will kind of help aid you with that. Okay, so next question uh, from Portugal. Is it possible to open VST Connect Performer on both sides instead of one of them have to be full Cubase? Well, VST Connect Performer is the what the person you're recording opens up. So one person would have to have, and it just kind of passes the audio, but it doesn't really, you know, won't allow you to record things. I know some people are kind of envision using it as a, you know, I want to rehearse with kind of, you know, latency compensation over the, you know, over the web, which is, you know, ideal for our current health situation. Um, and people want to do that because they're kind of socially distancing, uh, but it's not really intended to do that. So, you know, one person would have to have Cubase and, you know, the person you're recording doesn't have to be. And the intention is that the person you're recording may not be a Cubase user. They may not be a DAW user. They may just be a great musician that you want to capture. So they could download a free program. You could do all the settings and control directly from your of their hardware and their settings from your setup so that, you know, they could just kind of turn it on, 
you know, plug in a microphone, plug their guitar, their keyboard into uh, the interface, and you could just track them. So, you know, it's not really intended for straight, uh, you know, rehearsing, you know, and there's hardware pieces that do that. I think Jamlink makes one that I have friends use that, you know, really love what it does and that's its intention but it's really intended to have a performer that records into your program like cubase okay um okay so we have hi greg is it possible to cut to mono at 200 hertz with the stock eq in cubase um it's not really what I know some people do, um, you know, is, you know, in if you need, really needed to do mono, and I, I've gotten this question more recently, um, you know, I, I don't think it really will make a difference if it's mono or stereo where it's cutting from. Uh, but if you really had to, you know, cut you know let's go ahead and just take a look here so you know if we go to let's say uh you know our low cut filter and we, let's say we set that to 200 and we could also just kind of you know so let's say if we have that set up you know i don't i'm not sure why exactly people you know, need mono. If it's on a mono source, it will do that. I know some people will set up very uh, extensive um, chains to do this. So they may say, you know, I want to, you know, this, the EQ will by default work with whatever channel configuration you're in. But if you wanted to do that, I know some people that will come over here and say, you know, and create like a group channel if if necessary, but you could do something like I wanted a my compressor, a multiband compressor, and I want only my low frequency band on, followed by um let's get to your spatial panner and let's say a mono to stereo and we could choose to uh kind of invert that and then do an EQ. Um, so, you know, you could do like the studio EQ here and then cut, you know, at 200. You know, I, I'm i not sure if it makes a difference if the frequency is at 200 hertz or below or mono in the stereo track. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if that makes, you know, if it's like a nice concept that's not really practical, but maybe if you could uh, share why, why, what the use case is for that text uh, or Tez, that'd be great. So, okay, so let's scroll through questions. Thanks again. Okay, so the question is, how do you import all preferences and presets from previous versions of Cubase when you upgrade? Can this process be done automatically? A lot of times, I've always had it work automatically for me. Uh, I've seen some people mention that they could, you know, if they come to their preferences and save a preset, if they go to their key commands and save a preset, that that helps them. Another method is just to go to the edit menu and go to your profile manager and save a profile. So you could save this and this will be like all your presets, your, you know, key commands, preferences, everything in kind of one master file and just simply export the profile manager. I haven't had it not catch any of my preference presets when updating, but I've seen some people that had issues with that, but th this is really the intention of the profile manager. And you could, you know, put it on a cloud drive, but on a USB stick and we go to a friend's studio and you don't want to screw up all their key commands that you work differently in. You could just simply 
uh, take that profile and then load a profile, restart the program, and it kind of works with all your preferences and presets without screwing up theirs. It's always a good idea to save theirs first. Okay, going through more questions. Thanks for all the great questions. Okay. Okay, uh, question, please. Is there a way to have the playhead play from wherever I click in the middle of an event? I don't want to have to click in an empty space. Uh, I think if you, let's say, uh, if I was just playing along here, and if you hold down Option Shift, wherever you click, it'll just start playing directly from that event. So you could have it, you know, and it's tricky sometimes because you want it to, like, okay, I select an event by clicking, but Alt Shift will allow you to start playing from anywhere that you click in your timeline. So that should do the trick for you. Okay, so um, so I see in our question about the no sound in Cubase 10.5, I think we covered that a little earlier. Um, so I think that should cover it. Um, okay, so going through questions. Okay, so this is a, a popular question we've been getting on Hangouts recently, how to AB a reference track, thanks. Okay, so let's go ahead and load up a particular project that I know has reference track in it. Okay, give me just a second, sorry. All right, so one of the issues that people have uh, with uh, mixing to a reference track is they often put the stereo audio file in the reference. Uh, and then if they have effects on the master bus, which is pretty typical, like a limiter or an EQ, that when they do that, there the reference track itself is now being processed and it's not serving kind of as a reference. So we'll show you a, a trick to kind of get around that so that you can have a reference track that doesn't go through your actual master fader. So I'll just... So in this project, I have kind of my a mix here. And they had a, we had kind of the same, the mixed as a reference track here. Um, and let's say I will just EQ this really badly. You may get flagged by YouTube. All right. Uh, so I'm going to do this. And what I want to do is set up um, a control room. Okay. So I will go to my audio connections, and we can do this in the full uh, Cubase Pro, and this technique uses the control room. And I will just set up a Q-mix. I have a couple of Q-mixes here, but you could right click and you can see add Q-mix. So I will go ahead and just delete this Q-mix. Um, so I'll remove that. And let's say I now come here, we say add, uh, we have one queue available, so we'll call this our reference. Okay, so, and I'm not gonna really, uh, I don't have to have that connected. And what I want to do is we'll select this track. Uh, I'll go into my full mix console. And what I want to do is in the routing section, I want to send it to no bus. And then, uh, and I'll, let me just adjust that preference back for the color since I put it to full on. I'll just set it to default values here really quickly. All 
Okay, so the the trick is okay, so we take that and we don't want it to again, we send it to no bus. So this isn't this track won't go into this particular master fader, but I'm going to go to my reference track and we go to our racks and make sure that we have our Q sends enabled. So I will enable my Q send, turn this on, and this is going to my reference to my Q mix here. And what I can do is monitor the Q mix. So we'll play back. I'm going to unmute this track. So that's playing. And now I'm going to switch to the reference track by clicking on Q mix 4. And I could listen to my mix. So let's say, you know, this is softer. So that's a reference track. And this is my mix. And you could just hit one mouse button to toggle back and forth between your reference track and what you're using. So if you want to make sure that you're in the same ballpark level wise, that you're kind of the same ballpark tonality wise, you don't have too much bass or too much highs. You've got your mids just dialed in, right? So um, so that's that's a way to do it. So again, set up uh, a, you know, in the studio, go to audio connections, add a bus, add a Q-mix, take the, import the track as a reference, set the output to no bus, turn on that particular Q-mix for the reference Q-mix, Make sure that it's set to zero dB and then play and then toggle back and forth between the two different uh, mixes in the control room and you're all set. Okay, so let's keep going. Okay, so uh, you know, it says, uh, from Corey, I'm curious about working together with another musician somewhere else. You know, one of the things that's really handy, you know, and there's just an update to this today. Um, so I think that will, you know, resolve a lot of issues that perhaps people ran into. But if you go to your VST cloud, you can see VST Connect SE. And what this will allow you to do is uh, to actually come right over here and you could you know, cr create a VST connect and someone could download your other friend. If you wanted to record them could download, uh, the particular software and let me just, I think I already have one in this. I'll just do a new project just to kind of show this. And I'll just set up my control room a little differently. So just to kind of show this. So now as soon as you go to the VST Connect SE, you can say create VST Connect. It will automatically load up the plugin, create an audio track, and create a Q mix. And what you need to do is to send, you know, select all your tracks, uh, and then you could send a Q mix. You can log in like we showed a, a little bit earlier. Uh, and as we log in, you could then find friends and record them directly in. And, you know, we are pretty close to getting a new video done to kind of work through this, but, you know, check that out and you should be, you know, and if you've worked with it before and had difficulties, try the brand new version is released today. Okay. Okay, um, so question, what is the best auto-tune to use and where can you buy the latest Cubase? So, you know, Cubase is available from just about any music store. I'm not sure uh, where you're based out of, you know, but any music, I know I, I'm based in the U.S. and any music store uh, can do it, you know, can sell it quite easily. Um, 
So you could also purchase it directly from the Steinberg online shop. You know, sometimes you get great relationships with dealers uh, that can help you out. Um, and also, you know, in terms of auto tune, you know, once you have the Cubase Pro, I think it comes with it. It will come with very audio, which will allow you to do, you know, tremendous vocal tuning that's directly integrated in uh, with your system as well. So you could just simply come here and tune and, you know, adjust, you know, vibrato. So, you know, this I find integration is, you know, I think it gives you kind of the best integration, the best results for being able to work seamlessly with your DAW and this. So, but there's other tuning tools that were available as well that work just as great. Okay, uh, question, Cubasis for Android anytime soon? I'm sure that there's people working on it. We know that it's a, you know, people want it for Android as well. So um, I haven't heard, I haven't checked time frames or heard of a time frame for it, but I know it's being worked on, so. Okay, it says, uh, Greg, I'm still working for an essential hardware store. Yeah, so, you know, as I mentioned before, um, you know, many people, you know, always, you know, look through going into your dealers, you know, for stuff. You know, we love our dealer network, and they do a lot of great stuff. So uh, you could always, you know, get your Steinberg interfaces, Steinberg software for them. Okay, so question, can you please repeat the project logical editor macros for nudge right and left and a complete MIDI event? Note only some in CC uh, for a CCs for a some PPQ and a video frame. I don't think um we have to use the project logical editor for this um you know you could kind of do this with macros uh quite easily so let's say if i have um you know i'll just activate this project quickly okay I see comment, nice video at the logical editor. Thanks, I uh, hope people will experiment with it a little more. Okay, so um, as we want to, you know, you could come over here and do nudge palette. So go to the little system cog wheel and a lot of times the nudge palette isn't turned on. And once you turn it on, you see these different controls here. Now we could have two different time formats. Uh, and so you could have, so we can see kind of our primary time display is in bars and beats. So if I wanted to switch that to seconds or to time code, let's say for video frames, we could do that very easily. So let's say I have it set to bars and beats and my secondary time display. And if you don't see the secondary time display, you could go to the right here and you see these three little dots. When you see these three little dots, that means that there's there could be more controls that are kind of hidden from view. So I'll go to my primary time display and move that over here and then click here and say, okay, I wanted to go between bars and beats and time code. Now to switch back and forth between primary to toggle the primary and secondary time display, you could just hit the period key. And we notice that when we do this, that our snap value in the grid will change. So right now I'm in bars and beats, and we see this change to bar. And if I want to see other values, I can see beat using quantize or, or adapt to zoom. Uh, but if I switch to hit the period key on a computer keyboard, just above the, you know, just to the right of the space bar, uh, now we can see our nudge value expressed in different frame rates. So we can see one second, two frames, one frame, et cetera. So if I have, uh, you know, if I'm working on, let's say if I have this little audio vent and we'll just zoom in here, uh, I could select this and you could just use kind of, you know, 
And here I could nudge it by frame. And I think like, I'm just blanking on the key commands, but let me just not open the preferences, but open the key commands as, as I meant to. Sorry for my brain cramp. Um, and if you go under nudge here, all right, so um, so here you could just um, I think it's just with the arrow keys and maybe option. Let me just select the event. And now I could just hold down option in the left and right arrows, uh, but that's for the start. So let me just that's kind of extending to start. Let me just go. Okay, so it's just command left and right arrows, I think. So I'll select this. Yeah, so now I could just hit command or control and I could nudge by frame and there's key commands that you could toggle back and forth. So now I could nudge by frame, hit the period key. Now I can nudge by bar. So you could just use kind of the keyboard shortcuts. I'm not sure if you need to use a project logical editor preset for that. Um, but if I'm misunderstanding your question, please let me know. And you could let me know at uh, clubcubase at steinberg.de. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, my cursor just went way down to the bottom here. Okay. Okay, so I may have lost some questions in the middle, uh, but I'll just kind of keep continuing from the top of my list. Sometimes there's so many comments. I'm sorry I'm behind. We'll try to get through stuff. Um, okay. Okay, just reading through comments. Okay, just uh, trying to figure out where, okay, so let's see. Uh, okay, so I see the Cubase 10.5, no sound. Um, okay. Okay, so we have a question. I can't seem to change the grid anymore when programming drums. I was trying to lay in some ghost notes, but couldn't get the grid to change to allow me to do it. Uh, I could before the update. So let's say if we want to, uh, I'll just do a new project here real quick. And uh, we'll just make sure, you know, if you're doing this in the drum editor. Okay, so I'm just gonna create kind of a 
blank part here really quickly. And I'll switch to my drum editor. So to do, you know, one of the things that may not be so obvious, so let's say we zoom in here uh, and I have it set my quantize value. If we kind of just, let me just close this. We'll extend this line over just a little bit here. Okay, so if I have this set to 16th notes, I can now, so let's say if I have this set to half notes, when I kind of draw in, I can only draw in half notes. If I have this set to eighth notes, it'll draw in eighth notes. Uh, if you wanted to set it to, you know, 16th note, you know, 16th dotted notes after, you could have kind of different rhythmic values here. So, you know, and you can go up to, let's say, you know, 164th, you know, if you wanted to do kind of different values there. So if you're doing it in a drum editor, just make sure that, you know, each drum sound could have its own snap so that we can uh, have different rhythmic feels on that you could just kind of draw them in. So make sure that, yeah, I'm not sure, Michael, where you're, if you're doing that for. Okay. Okay, so um, we had a question from Rob from Amsterdam logging in a half hour late, sent a question about automating the envelopes. Uh, so we did cover that a little bit earlier. Um, okay, so sorry if I m missed a batch of questions. Sometimes the feed jumps way ahead here. Um, so I apologize for that. Okay, so just kind of coming through. Okay, I see a question, it's probably in jest. Uh, where can I find the make mediocre composing skills better feature? I, I think the chord track is really good for that. So uh, check that out. Um, all right. Um, Okay, so question for Greg, uh, is there going to be any further development in device panels in future versions of Cubase? I, I see, I feel it needs an overhaul. I haven't heard of anything and obviously, um, you know, a lot of people are kind of, you know, there's lots of people using hardware since, you know, but there's a lot of people, you know, dealing with software only. Um, I do have kind of a, a conference call about like some MIDI stuff where we're having some discussion. So I'll be sure to bring that up. Um, it hasn't been updated in a while and it hasn't been the highest priority. So, but you're correct in that. Okay, so uh, when I'm dropping MIDI files into a session, it automatically loads up Halion, but then is impossible to delete the Halion instrument track and folder after I notice this. Uh, uh, I've noticed this since Cubase 5, Nova Fix. Um, make sure that when you, you know, by default, you know, that tries to, a lot of MIDI files are intended to be used with uh, standard, you know, general MIDI or an XG or a GS sound set. Uh, but if you go to your preferences, and if you don't want that to start, you could go to, um, it's under MIDI, we'll see MIDI file. Um, 
and it says destination. Just simply choose this not to load up the Halion Sonic SE multi timbrel, but to, you know, you could go straight to MIDI tracks or instrument tracks, and then you could assign it uh, freely. And I think once, if it has an instrument track here, so let's say I loaded up, you know, four instrument tracks from a standard MIDI file here. Um, and we see this reflected in the rack. So I can see, so as soon as it loads up an instrument track, if I remove the track, that it removes it from my instrument rack. So you could just say remove selected tracks, remove selected tracks, you know, remove selected tracks. So that's, that's how you can get rid of them. Okay. Uh, it says, hi, Greg, I want to make a shimmer reverb uh, is basically a signal going into a reverb, then to a pitch shifter, then to output. Uh, but all are back into the reverb. How can I feedback the signal into the reverb? OK, so we had this question before and I probably misunderstood it. And someone asked for a feedback loop, probably what you'd want to work with is one of the new plugins that came with Cubase 10.5, and it's kind of a monster plugin. Uh, but if we add an effects channel track, and it's a delay plugin, but it's, again, really incredibly deep. So if we wanted to come over here, we can add our effects channel. And one of the, the plugin is a multi-tap delay. So if we wanted to come here, you could add a multi-tap delay. and you know, what a multi, you know, this will have kind of your typical delay functions and where you could have, you know, different stages of historical legacy types of reverb uh, or different delays. So if you want like, you know, modern digital or you want to sound more like an early digital, perhaps like a PCM 42 or tape delays, we could do all that. Now, the delays themselves can go through this whole effects section. So you could add different modules. So let's say uh, I want this to, um, you know, go, let's see, into a reverb. And then I want this signal to go directly to, uh, and you could set this with no delays, basically, and just say, okay, I want it to go into the reverb. I want it to go into, you know, a pitch shifter. You know, you could have up to, I think, six different plugins that you wanted to. So if you say, okay, I wanted to filter. Now, if we have multiple taps, um, you could have for each tap, you could have, you know, different effects for each tap here as well. So you say, okay, I want to overdrive followed by a frequency shifter going into a vibrato, into a flanger, um, you know, let's say flanger, and then into a reverb. Uh, and then as we go to each tap, um, you could say, you know, which parameter do you want to be affecting? So you could just say, okay, for the flanger, I want it this tap to, you know, let's say have my rate of the flanger change. And I want it to go to the reverb and I want each tap to, we'll say not just on or off, but I want it to size to go up and then back. Uh, but when I wanted to select a different parameter in a reverb, I want the low level to go down and let's say the width to get narrower and then wider. So each tap could have independent settings for each of the different effects here. So you could do it and then you could also just have global effects as well. So if you want to have different effects, now some people go, oh, you know, I loaded up a huge preset and, you know, what, you know, started taking my CPU away and they didn't realize that they had 23 plugins kind of running at once. So, you know, this is a, you know, a very powerful system. So if you wanted to feedback and send, you know, different signals in, play around with the multi-tap delay. And I think that will kind of do the trick for you. 
Okay. Okay, going through comments. Thanks again for everyone's questions. Okay. Okay, just reading through. Um, okay, I have a question. If you have one MIDI project, you can open with Media Bay, but if you choose inside of the MIDI file project, which instrument, what, oh, um, in which side the MIDI file project, which instrument you want to open, but not all the project, thanks, okay. Okay, um, so let me just take a take a. I will see if I can reread this if I understand it. I have a question. If you want one MIDI project, you can open with Media Bay, but you can choose inside the MIDI file project which instrument you want to open, but not at the project side. Okay, so I think what this is referring to is in the Media Bay. You could, and if you come over here and you look for, you know, different MIDI loops, um, and let me just see if we have. that when we do this, you could actually have like a little sequence to audition some of the different, uh, I think if you come here, you could set, uh, you know, uh, where you want it to be routed to, to audition the MIDI data. So if you're auditioning different drum loops and you want it, or like piano presets that you could do it and uh, it's probably more for instrument sound. So let me just, jump back to our VST instrument. So let's say if I go to Howling and Sonic and I'm here that you could, you know, perhaps audition your files here and send it to different instruments or you could have MIDI files that could be used for this. So the intention in the media bay is to have that be a way to audition different sounds or different MIDI files. And it's not intended for that to be coupled, to be attached when you drag it in. So I think I'm, if I'm misunderstanding that, let me know. Uh, we have a comment, um, says, I believe it's users library audio plugins. And that may be for the, um, I'm not sure, we'll take a look there, but and that could be referring to the plugin manager collections. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see. Okay, so it says, hi Undo, demonstrate how to use the W shortcut key. So the W shortcut key is really, you know, for automation, for writing automation, I believe. So let me just. So I'll just kind of extend this out a little bit here. So we have R and W. So if we come here. Let me just check what the W key is assigned. I thought it might be set to automation. I could be wrong. So yeah, that's just set to uh, write automation. So, you know, what that allows you to do is if we have a particular file here we could just say okay we go to the fader um and then let's see if i'm in the wrong zone maybe but that allows you to should allow you to just write the automation so this would allow you to say okay uh play this on the 
sorry about that. And I will just move the changes and those will be recorded so that you could have those re recalled. So that's what the W key allows you to do, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so I just saw a comment, external sync, like maybe how to get it set up. So if you go to your transport bar, you could just activate external sync directly from the bottom of the transport bar. Uh, you could also go to your project synchronization setup and tell where your sync is coming in, if it's coming in through, um, you know, MIDI port and, you know, where you're clocking, you could do that. So... Okay. Okay, question, what is the best or easiest way to organize your plugins? Um, so if we go to your plugin manager, and it, you know, could really, it's very personal for different people, how they want to organize. But, you know, I know some people will say, you know, um, you know, you could have it. So we go to your studio menu to VST plugin manager. Uh, and what you can do is you click on this plus sign and that will allow you to make a new plugin collection. So I could say, you know, I wanted to add all the plugins and we'll just call this Robbie. And at this point, you know, I don't, you know, for this, I don't want this. I could delete that particular plugin. So you could just simply come over here and say, I do or don't want to see, you know, these plugins. And you could make your own folders. And then at that point, you could just say, you know, I never, I don't want to use the UV22. I don't want to see it. You could pick and choose different folders. You could also just come here uh, and do a new folder. So you could say, like, my favorites. And then you could just select, you know, different uh, folder. You could just select your different files here and drag it over to, you know, different folders that you want. So, you know, if you say, I want this in other, I could just drag, drag. And now when I go to add plugins, I could just say, okay, I want to go to my inserts. And at this point, I just want to see, and you could select your different plugin collections here. Uh, and you can say, okay, under other, I want this. And that way you could organize it. And I know people will spend, you know, a lot of time organizing plugins so that they could find them and kind of weed through plugins that they don't want to see or use or have available on their system. Okay. Okay, going through comments. Thanks again for um, all the great questions from people. And if you're liking to hang out, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, so we have a question from Chris Comstock on the Grand 3. I'm thinking about buying the Grand 3 plugin. Let me see if I have a, a file. It's a pretty amazing piano i may not have it on my oh yeah i do we'll give it a try here so if you haven't really played around with the grand i just got a an email last night from david miles huber is a kind of a well-known uh, author who's written very famous recording books and kind of a, a long time industry advocate uh and he just you know it's like oh i just did a, you know shoot out of all of my piano plugins and the grand, you know, one hands down to him. So we'll just give you an idea what it sounds like. So the grand, if you're not familiar with it, uh, you could have, you know, multiple models. So we'll listen to um, a couple of the different models here. So this one will be uh, the Bosendorfer 290. So we'll just play a little bit. So.
And some of the cool things is you're going to have an EQ, but kind of a velocity control. So if I want it to be brighter, So that's a Bosendorfer 290, and let's say if you want like a Steinway, a Model D. And one of the things that's really impressive to me, and if you listen to, you know, like if I just hit like one note with a hard velocity. No, and there's no sample loops. So let's go ahead and listen to a little bit of the Steinway. At times we're getting more than 128 voices of polyphony. And then we have a Yamaha C7. There's an upright piano. It's always nice to hear one in tune. And then, of course, we have a Yamaha CP80, kind of an electric grand piano. And this will have different effects that you could have. So if you want to have a phaser or a chorus. Or dry. So if you're looking for new pianos, these are pretty spectacular. I still use them on projects all the time and just find it's a beautiful uh, set of piano samples. So check that out. 
Okay, so seeing comments, uh, AXR4 Masterclass. Um, I don't have one configured currently, but I could use the AXR4 on the next Hangout if you want. Um, so be happy to kind of go through that. Um, so seeing a comment that these Hangouts and your patience and answers are great, much appreciated. Uh, I know we can't get through every question, but we'll try to get through them as fast and as complete as possible. Um, so question, can you automate the click volume to reduce bleed? So often I find that when you run into situations where the click is bleeding through, um, you know, it, it can, it happens and, you know, there's, I have spent a lot of time, you know, for, you know, really high end singers editing out like click tracks, uh, that were recorded in the headphone. So a lot of times, uh, people may, um, you know, work with uh, different click tracks that, you know, w with vocalists. Uh, sometimes, you know, a lot of vocalists will never actually have uh, the click track. You know, if they're working, you know, ideally, sometimes if they're recording directly to, um, you know, different people. So if you have the click enabled, you know, sometimes, and this is probably why this is a popular click track sound, so if we go to your transport and go to your metronome setup, uh, and we will go to the click sounds, um, and one of the custom sounds that's kind of been used in studios for a long time is just kind of the, if you go under synthetic, and this is kind of like a Yuri click. So when I come here, you can hit play. Oh, that's not what I was thinking. So let me do that again. Vintage spike, rather. So now if I change that sound, that's a little less likely to bleed through in headphones. But if you needed to kind of automate that, what you could do is if you select the metronome, let's say I have my song outlined by my left and right locators. Um, and I think if you go to your project menu, um, you could, uh, let me see. If you go to signature track here, you could just say render audio click between locators, and that will automatically just render that as a wave file. And if you needed to automate that down in different parts of the song, now when we play back just the wave file, and I'll turn off my click. So if we mute this. So whatever metronome sound you use. So, you know, you could render it as a WAV file, render it as MIDI. And, you know, so there's a couple different techniques. Okay, so we have a question. Uh, do you really need to make these videos using Mac? Uh, us PC guys have to work around learning from you on Mac. The Hangouts I could switch over to, I could toggle back and forth to PC. Uh, the software for like some of my Q and A videos, the Mac uh, works much better for that. For the audio handling, the PC side's like there's I haven't found a good PC solution, uh, and I keep trying uh, that can handle like a microphone on a separate audio track than um, than the you know audio from Cubase. So it's like you know I don't want to have to necessarily record. Um, but I'll see if I could switch over to a PC for a future hangout and alternate. And I'm sure if I do it on PC, the Mac guys will complain The Mac guys will complain on PC. So, um, so, but we'll see if I could, could toggle it. And I, I try to always do, you know, the functionality is really the same. And if I don't know a keyboard shortcut, I, I try to, uh, cover it as best as possible, but I'll see if I could do another one and get it configured for, uh, doing it on the PC side as well. All right. Okay. Um, okay, so we had a question. Uh, not sure if I already answered the question uh, that posted prior to the Hangout. Um, the question that posted prior, uh, so I'll ask again, can delay ducking be implemented using direct routing, i.e. not having to duplicate? Okay, so there's a couple of ways to do it, um, you know, and if we do this uh, using the new multi-tap delay, 
uh, it kind of has this feature. So before we could take uh, a duplicate track and do kind of like a side chain into the delay. Um, and that way, when there is no po when there is no vocal going on, what that would allow us to do is to uh, the delay would kind of creep in, and it, it's a it's a cool effect to do that. And it's one of the things that was kind of implemented natively inside of the uh, multi tap delay. So let's say if I wanted to come here, uh, and I'll just go to my sends. And I'll just add a send here. So I'm just going to go to my multi-tap delay. All right. And you have kind of the built-in ducking here. So I'll just kind of take the reverb off or down and we'll just listen. What did you say? You wished it all away And I'm left here for a thousand years and a day You were the party the So you could hear that when the, the vocal is the not in that you could actually have that delay kind of creep in but not when the vocal is in. So we hear a little bit of echo. And a day. You were the party, the big event. I was your everything. Now I'm uninvited. And then there's additional controls as well where you could, uh, if you click on DL, you could erase the delay line when the ducking starts, or you could suppress the feedback when ducking as well. So, you know, you don't have to necessarily go through the direct route or do a duplicate if you just want to use the uh, multi-tap delay. And again, you don't have to use the tap for that. Okay, so it's in question VST Connect Pro and VST Connect SE is not showing in the VST Cloud menu. Is there some add on or licenses needed for that? The VST Connect Pro is an additional purchase, so you need a license for that, but you could try to download the latest VST Connect SE. Uh, and again, there's a new version released today, and try that and see if it, uh, but it should show up there kind of by default installed with Cubase. Okay, question, is there a way to import tracks from a project uh, including the arranger track? Uh, this is for creating a long sequence of songs for a live show, be able to add a verse or so in real time. I don't think in the import track dialog box that um, there is uh, an arranger track as an option, so let me just go to, uh, I'll just create a new project here. Of course, I had to pick the strangest audio. Of course, all right, just randomly picking stuff. All right, so let's say uh, I have an arranger track. Let me just duplicate this a couple times. Okay, so I'm gonna add just an arranger track to this. And arranger tracks are great as in the, the use case for this question for live performance. Uh, so if you've set up kind of an arranger track, I think that you might be able to, let me just come over here and see if we can drag. I thought we could maybe copy and paste or something just like that. So let me... So 
just copied that and let me see if I add an arranger track here, if that will paste over. So you can copy and paste the arranger data. Uh, and that could depend on making sure that the playhead position is there. So while it's not included in the import tracks, I you know try copying it from one project and pasting it into another project. And I think that will that will do the trick for you. Okay. Uh, and other tracks can be, you know, just import it. You know, just by coming over here. So let's say you get import tracks from project. And let's say, I think this might have a range. Of, let's see if I come here. Okay, I'm gonna just check this really quick. I'm gonna erase this. And I'll just see. So here, you know, new things were added in 10.5. This so says arrangement here, so I'll put it to a new track. I don't think that's it. Maybe that was just a marker track. Yeah, that was just a marker track. So, um, yeah, so try copying and pasting. And I think you can get it carried over. Okay, so um, we have a question on the channel EQ comparison. Can you view both EQ graphs in the same view? Show us how. This is one of the cool things that was added in uh, Cubase 10. So let's come here. And this is great for like where you have kind of frequencies that are perhaps uh, conflicting with each other. All right. So let's say if I wanted to EQ, um, Let's say my vocal what did you say? and maybe the piano sound. So I come here, you it go to the channel away. settings, and we need to I activate the channel comparison. And then I wanted to come here and I'll go to the grand. You were the party, the so if I wanted to EQ, so we can see kind of different colors. In the background, we see these colors and you could change kind of their level of transparency. So if you want it, I'll just knock this up here. So if you go to the, So now you can see kind of the different colors here. So if I wanted to now switch to the piano and then go back to my vocal. Now you see kind of the main color here switch. So you can see both their frequency response and their graphs. And if you need to make it more obvious color-wise, I think this defaults to 50 and 25%, but you could kind of bring that up. Uh, but that's how you could see both of the EQ changes and be able to 
kind of have the comparison EQ, which is really handy for doing lots of things. All right, so we'll move on. Okay. Okay, so it's Greg. How do I import waves into Groove Agent 5 and uh, the create new group and save without messing up my current Groove Agent library? So let's say we have uh, a brand new instance of Groove Agent. And this will work kind of the same way. So really, let's say if I have a particular kit here. And let's say this is in Beat Agent. Okay, let me find one in Beat Agent. Okay, so if you want to just take any, so let's say if we have, we can see that these will have, you know, multiple pads that are going to be used. And we could have up to, you know, 128 different sounds. But you could take any audio file and just drag it over. And if you wanted to go to a different bank, just kind of drag it to the bank number and then drop it. And then you could. So you could just kind of trigger it like that. And so that's how you could kind of drag and it won't affect, you know, you could see exactly with these little highlights above the banks, which banks are being used and not. Uh, so that's how you could just kind of uh, create the new group and save without, and that doesn't mess up the current groove agent. Okay, uh, so question, how do you make quintuplets or other complicated quantization in Cubase? Okay, that's a great question. So we'll go to our quantization setup. Um, so let's say if we have this set to, you know, eighth notes. Um, at this point, uh, you could just go to the tuplet and just say you want it to be set to five. So if you say, okay, I want it to be, you know, five divisions at this point you could just say you know i want the grid to be so just simply kind of come over here uh i did and before i figured that out i did something with the signature track as well so i just would take uh the first time i did it is kind of a horrible workaround i felt stupid and someone told me how to do that when I was kind of doing it wrong. So, uh, but another method is to say in your click pattern, you could have this be like a five, four click in four beats. So if I wanted to play this project, we could have a metronome of five beats spread across. And, uh, I'll just switch the sound to the default so we could hear it a little easier. What did you say? You wished it all away. So this way you could have different kind of left you. pulses on the click pattern. And as we do this, I could just like I did before, you know, you can go to the signature track or just clicking on here and turn that into uh, a MIDI. So I could say, okay, let's just do a MIDI click between the left and right locators and you could take one measure of this. So this would be five equal divisions. Uh, and then if we have our quantize panel open, you could just drag any part into it and now you could have five quintuplets and you could save that as a preset if you wanted to. So, but probably just going into the tuplets and putting five in, 
do that. And then you could do different uh, time divisions quite easily for quantizing presets. Okay. Uh, question, can you show the proper way to completely delete Cubase and every related folder on a Mac so that I can uninstall from the start? Uh, on the Mac side, you know, it, uh, when you go into, let's say we go to our Finder, you know, if you start Cubase up, uh, let me see if I can... Um, so let me, I'll do another way since I have it open already. So if we go to your finder menu, you go to your go, hold down the alter option key, you go to your library and here you can see all of your preferences, uh, and you could scroll down, uh, and see, you'll see a Cubase folder. So you can see your Cubase folder, you could delete that. And also if you go into your application support, uh, so say you go to library again, and under application support, you'll see Steinberg files in there. So deleting that in addition to uh, what's in the application folder that will give you kind of a fresh install. Okay, so um, okay, for some reason my colors won't show up when I went to preferences. I think colors aren't included in preferences, so. Um, but if you want it to carry colors over from one computer to another one, you may want to just simply save the project because it will be, I believe, stored within the project. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, um, so I see a question. Can I lock MIDI programming into a certain scale so that I don't put MIDI note out of scale by mistake? You know, I, I see a lot of programs that do this, and, uh, you know, musically, I have to say, I think it's really wrong um, because music can have accidental notes, uh, and that's totally fine. But, you know, what you can do if you want it to not be worried about it one is if you're doing a live performance if you come over here and let's say we add uh i'll just do an instrument track here real quick okay so let's just say you know i have a patch up loaded up here Okay, um, so on the inspector, you know, you have a little thing that says for an input transformer. So if you're playing live, what you could do is just sit here and say, you know, I want it to function to transform, you know, all my notes, and I wanted these to be, uh, and we'll say value to our pitch, and you could save this as a preset. Uh, and you want it to, um, do, do, do. let me just, and you can say fix to, and I just did it on the last thing out, let me just. Okay, so let's say value two or value one is going to be let's say it's inside range. Um,
but there's like an inside scale and I showed it on the last hangout. Uh, but if you have a chord track set up, so let's say I'll show you another method. Um, and I come here and you, if you activate show scales, you could say my key is set to, you know, C major or whatever. Now when I have notes in the editor, we could choose to colorize by scale or by the chord track. So now we can see notes. Let's say if I just randomly drew in some notes here. That notes that are red are out of key. Notes that are blue are within the scale. So that's that's one way of setting it up. So set your key once. But it's perfectly fine and normal to have a, key, a note that's not in the key of your song. So, you know, we don't want to necessarily restrict that. Um, you know, it's been done by from everyone. You know, Stevie Wonder, Bach. Beatles, Beethoven, John Coltrane, you know. Um, so it's perfectly fine to have notes. But if you wanted a quick visual representation, set in the chord track, make sure you have scales active, put on that global key, and then set the colors based on chord track. Red notes are out of scale, out of key, and green notes or these kind of aqua blue notes are within this scale. Okay. Okay, so um, hello, question. Can you say about connections and studio setup? I have a problem with that. I have different errors, Rudy. So, you know, most of the time your uh, audio connections you know, we'll show, you know, your inputs and outputs. So, um, you know, here we could see what outputs were being sent, what inputs from our audio interface. Uh, you could also have connections being routed out into your control room for headphone mixes. Um, so maybe, Rudy, if you could uh, indicate what errors you're running into, that might be helpful. Um, Okay, so I see a question. Uh, Greg, not really Cubase related, but I have the AXR4U, the Windows WDM driver only allows me to select one in and out instead of which input and output I want to use for Windows audio. Why is this? Um, I'll check with, um, that's the design of it. And we kind of raised a concern recently to some of the engineers at Yamaha who've kind of built and designed that. Um, and I'll see if I can get a better answer it might be just kind of an oversight of them not thinking that people are going to use like an axr for you for uh windows for wdm and windows audio but obviously you know some priorities have changed uh with so many people being stuck at home okay so glad i've seen comments that these are great videos hangouts super helpful great um okay Okay, so some people are learning new tricks. That's good. Okay. Um, so question, can you do layering of samples in a single sample track, or is it meant to go and use Halion and Contact if you need to do something like that? Um, the sample track's intended for one sample. It's really intended to be, you know, something very simple. But if you needed more tracks, you know, one of the things that you could do is and you know one of the things that's like really interesting about um you like the sample track so let's say if i come here to uh you know I'll add a sample or a track you know once you come here you see these little three arrows so let's say you know i have a quick audio file in here Okay, but you could now also just, if you see these three arrows going to the right, you could say transfer to Groove Agent SE. And what a lot of people don't realize is you could have 30, I think 32 velocity layers per pad. 
in Groove Agent SE and you could take, uh, you know, so if I have, let's say I'll just remove this and I wanted to treat Groove Agent SE kind of like a sampler. Um, so I think I'll have like a Motown bass. Okay, so I see that we have Motown bass and it's on B02. So I'm gonna just drag uh, this Motown bass to, and let's just find B2. Okay, so I'm gonna just play that note. So I'm gonna drag this and let me just find the right octave. So it'll say, okay, here's C sharp one. So I want this to be, I'll just put on B1 here, okay? And now what I could do is if you go to pitch, you could set the key range of that particular sample. And you can say, I want that to go from B1 to, you know, B2. So now as I play back, And you could have, you know, multiple layers and you could do round robins and, you know, different aspects, you know, directly here, uh, you know, using the sampler. So if you wanted to have like, you know, multi layers, multi samples, you know, think of using Groove Agent SE5 as well. So while many, you know, many people perceive it being kind of an MPC environment, you could treat it as a sampler very easily. Okay. Uh, so going through, okay, so I see, uh, I know, I, I love how most of these questions could just a comment, it could be uh answered by reading the manual but greg is so patient and chill well you know people not reading the manual is kind of you know been good for my career so i'll, I'll take it um so uh let's see okay so we i see people referencing the q centric from last week we did do that earlier um okay um Okay, uh, so I see, sir, is there any way to fold the piano roll like Ableton Live? Currently not, and I could see where it makes sense to fold the drum editor, but again, if you play stuff and you want it to move to a different, you know, if you played and you're editing MIDI and you fold and you realize that, you know, that pitch wasn't included when you did a fold, you know, that could be problematic, I would think. Um, but I'll pass that on as a feature request. Okay, so I see question. Um, hello, I can't load Cubase LEAI 10.5 on my MacBook Pro. You know, check to make sure, you know, depending on which version, um, you know, it, it may need, uh, you know, for the different ones, you probably need to have an LEAI license. Um, so make sure that you have a license and those are often like the LE version comes with third party plugin or third party hardware and solutions. And the, you know, AI comes with Steinberg and Yamaha hardware. So you should check to make sure that you have licenses. So it's not just a free download. Um, okay. Okay, despite using Cubase for over 25 years, I love these Q&As as there's always plenty of new aspects I never knew about. It's great, I'm glad you feel that way. That's why we kind of do these. Um, okay, uh, says, can you go over how to set up and use expression maps? I use a lot of Spitfire and composer tools, but don't know how to utilize all the extended features to help the instrument sound more realistic. All right, so we'll give you just a quick run through, and there's probably people that have made expression maps. 
Um, so, you know, and as someone mentioned right below, you know, could be, uh, you know, a bit tedious, but we'll show you some of the concepts and I'll just load up a particular file. Okay, so if we want to go to uh, the expression map, so we can see this in the MIDI menu and go to uh, the expression map setup. Um, so here, you know, we could, you know, at this point, we could, you know, do a brand new expression map and you could have different slots. And sometimes what you want to do is to actually, you know, take a look at an expression map that's already created. So we can see that you're going to have you know, the different MIDI note messages here, as well as kind of the name of the articulation, um, you know, and you can see the articulation and you could have different colors here. So, you know, you could just kind of have to build these. Now, many times people will build them and share them. Uh, so there's a lot of different expression maps and probably if you go to the Spitfire forums, you could have, you know, so many people just build expression maps for every single instrument and have it set up for exactly how you want. And if you're not familiar with how the expression maps work, uh, this will allow us to do some interesting stuff. Like let's say if we wanna take the Schubert piece here. So if I wanted to just solo the violin. And let's say we want to take that violin and switch the articulation probably for these 16th notes or 32nd notes. So I wanted this to be more spiccato. So I could just come here, spiccato, and then go back to legato before that note. And what that's going to do is switch the sample. So you could just kind of switch between different articulations that have been done here. And this carries over into the score editor. So, you know, if you're not comfortable making your expression maps, you know, see if someone has done it. Because I find that most of the people that haven't built their own will just simply, you know, you know, once they're available, they tend to share them. So check that out. And, you know, it's a and I think if you watch um I think Junkie XL, I haven't watched the video, but he told me that he was kind of doing the mother of all expression map videos uh, when I was at his studio maybe 14 months ago. So I think that could be a great resource to use. Uh, so we see a question, is there any way to insert an effect across all audio channels in the mix console? So if you want to do this, and we could use the quick link function for this. So we have audio tracks here. So say I have nine audio tracks. We go to look in the mix console and we'll look at our inserts. So I want to select, I'll just hold down shift and select the highest and lowest. Uh, and then you could hold down, you see this uh, quick link, Q link here. And you could activate that by holding down alt shift or option shift. Uh, and now I will just come here and say, okay, I want it, uh, you know, a compressor on all the tracks. So whatever tracks are selected, it will automatically uh, just put that plug in. Or if you wanted to change parameters, as long as they're all kind of alt, alt shift for the quick link mode, that could do a lot of great things with routing. Okay. Okay, we see Tony Ray Jones on online. It's good to see Tony. All right. Um, a 
Okay, so hi, Greg. Why uh, Groove Agent doesn't recall drum editor when you change to different MIDI events? Um, let me just check, and I'm not sure if this is the full Groove Agent. Um, okay, let me just check. Make sure I'm understanding the question here. Just load up in a, a beat agent kit. So I'm not sure if I'm understanding your question, but I'll take a stab at it. So when we go to the pattern, and then you go to edit uh, the pattern itself. So if I select, So I'm not sure if this is where you mean. Maybe if you could let me know. Um, so if, if that makes sense. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's what you mean by the question. So, all right. So we'll see question. Hi, Greg from Jersey uh, Channel Islands. Okay, is there a way to use auto alpha or other MIDI effect units to automate parameters on quadrifas and other Steinberg units? Um, so if you come here, so let's say uh, you'd ask about quadrifas. So let's load that up. I'll just take my quick link off. Okay, so what you could do, um, and I'm not sure if I have it all set up. So let's say, uh, if I want this particular parameter, you know, if you don't see like a MIDI CC learn, we could assign it to like a quick control. I know we're running a little late, so I'll try to get through this quickly. Um, and what you could do, and I'm not sure if I have this uh, actually set up, So I will, you know, I think, and there is a video on this. So if you say, okay, I want this to be my IAC controller, uh, and we're going to have this be channel 16 for the quick controls. Okay, let's add a MIDI track. And I want to send this out. So let's say I just add drive one two quick controls okay so we have that in slot okay and if i have this set up we'll go to my midi inserts and i'm just going to confirm okay so 16 okay so now We'll set that to quarter notes. So I'll hit play, and we'll make sure that this is going out. So what you want to do is to create kind of a MIDI loop back on that particular channel. And let me just check my setup again. So we'll do our VST quick controls.
and I may not have my IAC bus set up, but if you set up kind of a MIDI loopback, um, you could do it. And um, if you do a search on the Cubase YouTube channel uh, on auto LFO, there's a video where I kind of walk you through that. So give that a give that a shot and I think you know that'll answer your questions I don't think I have my IEC bus set up correctly okay um question is auto-tune better than pitch correct or very audio I think you know the integration of very audio makes it very unique uh, and it's something that you don't really have and I found that you know most people once they kind of get into very audio or pitch correct, that they tend not to go back to uh, third party solutions. Okay. Um. Okay, so you have to see a question uh, how to do multi mono track in Cubase, same as. Pro Tools, um, so, you know, we can take, you know, stereo tracks, you know, so we have kind of, um, you know, if you wanted to, you know, you could have a, you know, if you're looking for like two stereo tracks that are coupled together, you know, it's kind of, you could group the tracks together. Uh, if you're looking for like a 5.1, you could have 5.1 interleaved or stereo interleaved files, but it'll probably behave a little differently. Um, okay, just going through. Yeah, so it's just seeing a comment about, you know, doing it in retro log, but, you know, which I think I showed on the last Hangout, but if you, we just had to set up a loop back for the LFO. Um, I'd, I'd could have to check my IAC settings, and I know we're running late in a Hangout, so we'll see if we get through some more questions, but check out the auto LFO plugin. Um, Okay, uh, might be a basic question, but can a drum editor be used with addictive drums? Many thanks. Yes, you can use the drum editor for any MIDI source. So many people use it for, you know, not just drums, but getting into, you know, various, uh, you know, other, you know, people used to use it for triggering samples in the old days. So, okay. Okay, is there an option where you can set all parameters to zero, including pan and volume level in a mixer window, uh, having issues where I have tracks panned all the way to the left? Um, so let's say if you come here, you know, I let's say I have a number of tracks panned to the left, and let's say some to the right. A lot of parameters can be set to their default by clicking on control. But if I have Quick Link turned on and all the tracks selected, uh, so even though my panning is set, I could just, if I, let's see if this does it. So hold down Control or Command. And now they'll all be reset to default values. So you could do that for, um, so make sure that the Quick Link is active. And again, if I come here and say, okay, now I adjust all those. Uh, I can move them all to the left, and that could be for panning, volume, plug-in parameters, or now just control or command, click, and that will take you back to the default. Okay. I know we have just go through a couple more questions. hope everyone's learned a couple of tips and tricks. Uh, and if you've liked the Hangout, please feel free to do a thumbs up. Uh, so we'll do that. Okay, in the F3 mixer, there is a downward triangle top right where you can select uh, reset mix console tracks. That's another way to do it. Um, okay, how often do they have these Cubase Hangouts and how long is per session? Um, because we notice a lot of people are stuck at home. We're trying to do two sessions and they usually last about three hours we go for. So to make sure everyone gets a lot of questions and great feedback and you can always watch them afterward um
Okay, how can I set up Cubase such that if I press a certain key or pad, it gives the tempo? Um, so the tempo is kind of always visible here, but if you hit, uh, I think, Command T, you could always, that will open up the tempo track and you could see the tempo information listed there. So, um, but it's by default always visible on a transport as well. Okay. Okay, so, um, all right, just kind of going through. All right, so I see a question. Um, uh, please explain merging projects. You know, some people will just kind of, uh, you know, you could do it a couple of different ways. So if I have like this project, I could drag, you know, a number of different audio files over. Uh, I could copy the files to the project folder or not. All right, so let's see, my OBS may have hung up. We'll see if it recovers. Just waiting, I'm kind of watching the feed. All right, so it looks like it recovered. Uh, so that's one way you could also just go to import uh, tracks from project. So you could do it like that as well. Um, Okay, uh, so question, can you show us how to set up OBS and Cubase for Hangout? Um, so what I do is I have OBS kind of set up. I'm using a different mixer that I feed everything into, so microphone and the mixer. Uh, and my microphone and my audio interface are going into a Yamaha mixer, which has a USB out. I take the display for that. You could go into um the streaming settings uh put in the stream key from the website uh make sure that you have the audio set up i make sure that the video is set to 1920 by 1080 you could get the stream key from the google hangout link here copy that key and paste it into OBS here, and then once you have a connection started, at that point, uh, click on Start Stream, uh, and then you're live. So, um, but it seems to work pretty well. It seems to be pretty reliable. So I had to just stop the stream and do it, and it kind of actually did it. I was I was impressed with that. Okay. Um, Okay, so hello, Greg. I use my laptop audio integrated interface, and I'm very happy with it, but I'm concerned about the final quality when I export the mix sound. Is there a difference with a dedicated interface? If you're doing everything kind of in the box and you're happy with the monitoring source, um, you know, ideally it's more critical in the capture part, you know, but you could do all of your mixing and export the file, and the only gotcha could be like the monitoring environment so you know you know some people will feel they need a better sounding clock or a higher resolution clock or going into speakers but you know it's not really going to change the quality of the audio but it may affect the decisions you make in the mix process okay um all right going on okay thanks for all the great questions Try to get one or two more in here. Okay, so it says, hey, Greg, there is no way to solo a band in a stock EQ. I don't think so, but we'll take a look uh, one more time. Yeah, I don't believe that there is. 
uh, and let me just see if we do the studio EQ, which is kind of a very similar concept. Yeah, so there, there isn't a way to do the soloing on a, on a particular band. Okay. Okay, uh, I have a question about saving VST uh, FX presets on external hard drive. How can I have it set up? Um, the, the, you know, the, it tries to keep it in the app, you know, in the user settings folder or in your preferences so that it's in the system. If you, and that's a good thing so that you could actually migrate. Now, if you have, if you wanted to switch it from your presets from one computer to another, that's where the profile manager could come in and that would keep all of your user defined presets. So see if that helps. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead through some more questions here. We'll try to get one or two more in. Okay, so I see uh, a question where vinyl is a use case for mono low end. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I see, hello, please. I would like to ask when will the Nuendo update be downloaded? Um, you know, I'm sure that people are working on it now, but they haven't released, uh, announced the release date for it. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, my son is knocking on the door and he knows that my three hours are up. Uh, so we'll go ahead and wrap up. We've got about three hours and 12 minutes. Uh, I'm sorry if I lost a couple questions. Sometimes the interface kind of resets and I can't go all the way up. If you want to send questions to me in advance, you could send them to clubcubase at steinberg.de. Uh, I hope that everyone's learned a couple tips and tricks. I appreciate everyone being on the Hangout. Uh, I hope that everyone stays safe and healthy and that you take some time to learn your Cubase a little better in some downtime and make some great music and record some great audio. So thank you very much. We'll be doing another Hangout on Friday at 1 p.m. E the same time, 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Uh, so if you subscribe to the channel and like the Hangout, uh, give, it, you know, give it a thumbs up for the Hangout and subscribe. Uh, then you can be notified of the next Hangout. So thanks to everyone. Uh, and again, I hope everyone's learned something. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Hey, buddy. Yeah, I'll be...